No wonder farmers were always looking for a useful dog. Our farming ancestors found dogs useful to them in three main ways, often summarised as barking, biting and herding. Barking dogs would alert you to the presence of predators or thieves. Almost any dog, large or small, could be a barker. Biters were dogs that would protect your flock from attacks by wolves or bears. These dogs obviously had to be big and fierce, and you can still see them at work in the mountain areas of Europe. Strong dogs and good bodyguards, they are the big bruisers of the farming world. They would take on a wolf and would give it a hard time. They're used to guard the flanks of the flock, providing protection while at the same time preventing the sheep from straying. But they're not much use for manoeuvring or herding the flock. Herding means gathering the sheep together into a group, controlling them and moving them from place to place. Barking and biting don't call for any great skill. But when it comes to herding, you need a dog that uses brain rather than brawn. Early farmers would have employed any useful herder and almost any black or brown dog with white feet and a white tip to its tail would have been labelled a sheepdog or collie. But the shepherds of the border counties between England and Scotland developed a strain of dog which worked in a unique manner, now generally known as the eye dog. These border collies worked low to the ground using the power of the eye to control the flock. It is, yeah, it can uh, maybe control a number of sheep just by eye alone um, and there's a certain amount of intensity that the sheep are going to feel uh, when the dog's focused on them in that way. Sometimes uh, the dog can have too much eye and that only allows the dog to lie down on one spot and stare for a very long time. It can be very irritating for a shepherd if uh, it's got too much eye. Um, so the correct balance of eye and flanking instinct is really quite important. The collie's method of working with its eye caused less stress and injury to the stock than the big biters, and they were far more skillful in manoeuvring them. And this skill has been refined over centuries to produce the finest herding dog anywhere in the world. There are four basic skills involved in herding. Gathering means bringing the sheep towards the handler. Driving means forcing them away from the handler. Penning means getting the sheep into a gated enclosure and shedding means taking one or more sheep out of a group. These basic herding skills can be seen in the sheepdog trials that take place regularly in farming areas throughout the country. The trial field is laid out with a starting post at one end and a pen enclosure at the other. Halfway between these are gates that the sheep have to be driven through. A group of sheep usually four, are first brought to the starting post. Handler and dog take up position beside the pen. Gathering begins with the dog doing an outrun to a point behind the sheep and then lifting them, that is starting them moving down the field. A skilled herding dog will keep a good distance back from the sheep so as not to scare them and it will keep them moving at a slow and steady pace. An untrained dog will barge in at speed and upset the sheep, then chase them up the field as if it was trying to catch and eat them, so the sheep panic and run away. Once the sheep have been successfully gathered, the drive can begin. This is a real test of the skill and training of the dog. Sheep are the dog's prey, and in the wild, it would round them up and drive them towards its pack leader for the kill. Driving them away from its leader, the shepherd, goes against its natural instinct. Manoeuvring the sheep between gates is another test of skill. 
In trials, there are no fences at the sides of the gates, so only the dog's skill prevents the sheep from running round them rather than going through them. The same can be said about getting sheep into the pen. Sheep don't like enclosures, and persuading them into a pen can be a very difficult task. It takes a lot of cooperation between shepherd and dog to complete this task, especially if the sheep are stubborn and stand up to the dog. The last of the basic skills is shedding. In this trial, this means splitting a foursome into two pairs. Sheep flock together for safety against predators. Being separated makes them feel vulnerable, so they resist. It can take a lot of time and patience on the part of both dog and shepherd before a successful shed is achieved. Driving, penning and shedding are not behaviours that come naturally to the dogs. It takes a lot of training to teach dogs these skills. But training a sheepdog is an art in itself. It's not like teaching a dog how to sit or give you a paw. You do this by showing the dog what you want it to do and then rewarding it with a treat or a toy. But collies don't herd sheep in order to get a biscuit or a toy. Shepherds don't show collies how to herd sheep. The dog knows that far better than the shepherd ever will. Training is about getting the collie to apply its instinctive ability to herd sheep in the way you want it to. It's a process of mutual understanding and communicating effectively so that the dog understands what you want it to do. And the key to this lies in establishing the right personal relationship with your dog. For each dog has its own ways and temperament, and so does each shepherd. Once this relationship has been established, the dog will herd the way you want it to, without the need for any treats, unless you count the pat on the head as a treat. Jess, don't be daft. That stick's too big for you. You're only a dog. No, Jess, you're not just a dog, you're a border collie. <laughs>